So hi everyone. So in this session, we are going to discuss about the AIT three class level need solution for chemistry. Okay. So uh, we are going to deal with some important questions and uh, the questions which are uh, which you find difficult. Okay. So going to the first question. So among the following orbitals, the angle is minimum between. So option A, sp3 bonds. Option B, px and py orbitals. And uh, C, hoh in water. And D is sp bonds. So we are asked to find out the system which is having very less water. Okay. So in case of sp3, sp3 is the hybridization of the system which is tetrahedral, right? So the tetrahedral bond angle is 109.5 degree, okay? And in case of Px and Py, so suppose if this is the x-axis, this is your Px orbital, and if this is the y-axis, then this is our Py orbital. So you can see the angle that is created between Px and Py. Since they are perpendicular to each other, so the angle will be 90 degrees. Angle will be 90 degrees. Okay. And in case of HOH, in water, so water has a bent structure with two lone pair of electrons on it. And the HOH bond angle in water is 104.5 degrees. 104.5 degrees. Okay. And SP bond. SP uh, hybridization is for the system which are having linear structure. So if it is linear, means the bond angle will be 180 degree, right? So these are the bond angles. And you can clearly see that the option B, that is Px and Py orbitals, they are in 90 degree with each other, in which the angle is minimum among the given four options. Okay? Yes. So coming to the next question, that is question number 55 of your question paper. So when a hybridization state of carbon atom changes from sp3 to sp2 and finally to sp, the angle between the hybridized orbitals, we have to find out whether it decreases gradually or decreases considerably or it is not getting affected or it is increasing progressively. So for sp3 hybridized system, the bond angle is 109.5 degree, tetrahedral bond angle. And if the system has sp2 hybridization, then the bond angle is 120 degree, right? And in case of sp, the bond angle is 180 degree, okay? So you can see that the bond angle increases progressively. Bond angle is Increasing from 109 to 120 and from 120 to 180. Okay. So option D is the correct answer for this question. Okay. Then coming to the next question. Question number 58. The value of Planck's constant is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. The velocity of flight is 3 to 10 to the power 8 meter per second. Which value is closest to the wavelength in nanometer of a quantum of light with frequency of 8 into 10 to the power 15 second per second? So what we are asked to find out, it is the wavelength. We are asked to find out the lambda value. So we are asked to find out the lambda value. Okay? So what are the given values? Planck's constant is given. H is given. H is 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. So these are the given values. Okay. And velocity of light. Speed of light is given, which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second, meter per second. And uh, frequency is also given. So what is the frequency given to you? Frequency is mu. Or uh, we can take this uh, velocity as C also. Okay. C of all. B is this and uh, new, is, new is frequency and frequency is 8 into 10 to the power 15 per second. So these are the given values. 
so what is lambda lambda is lambda is c by nu right lambda is c by nu. so what is c this 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and your new value is 8 into 10 to the power 10 per second okay so per second second gets cancelled and on uh, solving this we will have 7 and 3 by 8 into 10 to the power minus 7 that will be uh, 0.375 into 10 to the power minus 7 meter you will get and what i can write i can uh, shift this it is it becomes 3.75 into 10 to the power 1 nanometer i get so we all we know that 1 meter is equal to 10 to the power 9 nanometer right this 10 to the power 9 nanometer so this meter can be converted to 10 to the power minus 9 and i can shift the digits like this so 3.75 into 10 to the power 1 so 3.75 is approximately equal to 4 this into 10 to the power 1 nanometer To ten to the power one nanometer. So since we have to find the values in terms of nanometer, we are doing this, and we are getting option A as the answer for this question. Okay. So just you have to look into the conversion part of this question. Otherwise, so the uh, process is very easy. We have to use uh, this lambda is equal to c by nu. Okay. And moving on to question number sixty-three. So, if ionization potential for hydrogen atom is thirteen point six electron volt, then ionization potential for helium plus will be. So, how to find out? Ionization potential is nothing but the energy, right? Ionization energy. So, helium plus. For helium plus, we have to find out. Helium is also a hydrogen-like ion. Since helium plus contains One electron and hydrogen also contains one electron. No, so helium is a hydrogen-like ion. So for hydrogen, what we use? We use E is equal to minus thirteen point six into E to the power divided by n square. So this is what we use for hydrogen-like. And in case of helium, the atomic number of helium, that is, is the value of helium, will be two. And what is the electronic configuration of helium? It is one plus two, right? And for helium plus, it is one plus one. Here you can see that n value is one, so n is equal to one. So substitute these two values in the energy equation. So the E value will be minus thirty point six into two square, which is four divided by one. So minus thirteen point six into four. Will give you minus fifty four point four electron volt as the answer. Okay, so option A is the correct answer. Clear? Yeah. Okay. Then moving on to the next question. That is question number sixty five. So it is on the screen. You can see. So volume occupied by One mole of one molecule of water whose density is equal to one gram per centimeter cube is. So we have to find out the volume occupied by one molecule of water. So what is density? Density is equal to mass by volume. And from this, volume is equal to mass by density. Mass by density, right? And what is the mass of uh, water? Mass of water. This eighteen gram per mole. Mass of water is eighteen gram per. Mole. So since the formula for water is H two O, atomic mass of hydrogen is one, and since we are having two hydrogen, it is two into one, which is equal to two. And since we are having one oxygen, and atomic mass of oxygen is sixteen, so one into sixteen is sixteen. So now the total mass will be eighteen. So this is the mass of water, one mole of water. So the mass is 18 gram per mole, and the density of water is taken as one gram per centimeter, right? 
So what is the uh, answer? Gram gram gets cancelled and uh, the volume is 18 centimeter cube per mole. 18 centimeter cube per mole. So this will be your volume. Okay. Or we can take this as molar volume. So this is our volume or we can uh, take this as molar volume since we are finding out from one mole of Okay, now we have to find out the volume of volume of one molecule of water. So, how to find out the volume of one molecule of water? It is the given molar volume, the molar volume divided by Avogadro number, which is Na. Right? So, what is the molar volume we got? It is 18 centimeter cube per mole. Divided by Avogadro number is 6.022 into 10 to the power 20, 23 per mole. Okay. So on solving this, on solving this, we get 2.989 into 10 to the power minus 23 centimeter cube. Or this 2.989 can be approximated to 3 into 10 to the power minus 23 centimeter cube. Okay. So just we have to read this formula. To find out the volume of one molecule, divide the molar volume and with the Avogadro. Okay. So option C is the correct answer. Okay. Yes, so coming to next question. Question number 66. How many moles of lead to chloride will be formed from a reaction between 6.5 gram of CBO and 3.2 gram of HCl? So, the reaction is, so now lead oxide is reacting with HCl, right? So, PBO reacts with HCl to form lead 2 chloride. So it is PB, Cl2 and water. It is an acid base reaction, right? So lead oxide is uh, basic in nature and HCl is an acid. HCl is an acid and PBO is a base, basic oxide. So it is an acid base reaction which leads to the formation of salt and water leads to the formation of salt and water. And if we want to balance this equation, since we are having two chlorine, you just multiply HCl by 2. So this is the reaction. And here, the mass of HCl and the PBO, they are given. Okay. And we have to find out the number of moles of lead to chloride. That is PBCl2. Number of moles formed has to be found. So to find out the number of moles, we need mass and molar mass, right? So let us try to find out the number of moles of lead oxide and HCl first. So the number of moles of lead oxide will be equal to the given mass divided by the molar mass. Given mass divided by the molar mass of lead oxide. The given mass of PBO is 6.5 gram and molar mass, what we have to do? So, the atomic mass of lead is equal to 207 and for oxygen it is 16. So, if we add these two, we will get 223. So, 223 is the molar mass of what? Lead oxygen. Okay. So, 6.5 divided by 223 gives you 0.029 as the answer. So, this is the number of moles of lead oxygen. And... The number of moles of HCl, it is equal to the mass of HCl given in the question is 3.2. And what is the molar mass of HCl? So hydrogen 1 and for chlorine, the atomic mass is 35.5. So the value will be, so the value will be 36.5, right? The molar mass of HCl is 36.5. So 3.2 divided by 36.5 is equal to 0 0.087. So these two are the number of moles of both the components. 
you can see from the number of moles itself that the number of moles of lead oxide is very less compared to the number of moles of HCl. So the one which is present in very lesser amount is called as limiting reagent, right? So the one which is present in very lesser amount is called as limiting reagent. So this lead oxide is our limiting reagent. Lead oxide is our limiting reagent. Okay. So lead oxide only determines the formation of or the number of moles of formation of lead uh, chloride that is PbCl2. Got it? So since one mole of PbO gives one mole of PbCl2, 0 0.029 moles of PbO will produce 0 0.029 moles of PbCl2. Okay, so the option D is the correct answer for this question. Clear? Then coming to question number 67. An element X has the following isotopic composition. You can see it on the slide. Uh, three X molecules, X atoms are having different compositions and the weight average atomic mass of the naturally occurring element X is closest to. So we are asked to find out the average atomic mass of the given species. How to find out the average atomic mass? Average atomic mass of the given species is equal to the mass of each element into the percentage. The first element if we can take it is 200 into 90 plus the mass of the second element is 199 and the given composition is 8 percentage plus the mass of the third element is 202 and the composition is 2 percentage. And you have to divide all these three by the 100. Okay. So what we get 200 into 90 is 18,000 and 199 into 8 is 1,592. And 202 into 2 is 404. Okay. Divided by 100. So what we get on solving this, you will get 199.96. 199.96. So this value is uh, very closest to 200, right? Value is closest to 200. Fair option D is your correct. Yes. Now coming to question number 68. The maximum number of molecules are present in. So to find out the maximum number of molecules, we have to find out the number of moles first, right? So how to find out the number of moles using mass by molar mass formula? You can use. And four different options are given to us. And option A says that 15 liter of H2 gas at STP, at standard temperature and pressure. So how to find out the number of moles from uh, option A? So we know, so we know that one mole of gas, one mole of gas at standard temperature and pressure occupies 22.4 liter. And here 15 liters are given. Okay. So 15 liter of H2O gas occupies 15 divided by 22.4 liter. Okay, the value will be 0 0.67. 0 0.67. Okay, now coming to option B. 5 liter of N2 gas at yes. 5 liter of N2 gas at STP. So what we have to do? It is 5 liter divided by 22.4. The answer will be 0 0.22 moles unit. Okay. And coming to option C. It is 0 0.5 gram of H2 gas. So your uh, value is given in terms of gram. From gram, how to find out the number of moles? Number of moles is equal to the mass by molar. Right? The given mass is 0 0.5 gram. And the molar mass of H2 is 2. Right? Molar mass is 2. 
atomic mass of hydrogen is 1 and since we are having 2 hydrogen it is 2 and 0 0.5 divided by 2 is 0 0.25 volts got it and coming to option d coming to option d 10 gram of o2 gas so again we have to use the same mass by molar mass formula so the given mass is 10 gram and the molar mass of oxygen is 32 right for one oxygen it is 16 and for o2 it is 30 and 10 divided by 32 is 0 0.312 volts so now the maximum number of molecules are present in so where we have more number of moles that only leads to the more number of maximum number of molecules right so you can see from the given four options that we are having 0 0.6 and 0 0.2 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 so in the first case only we are having more number of moles which contains more number maximum number of molecules okay so option a is the correct answer for this question got it Coming to the next question, question number 69. In Haber process, 30 liter of dihydrogen and 30 liter of dinitrogen were taken for reaction which yielded only 50 percentage of the expected product. What will be the composition of gaseous mixture under the coarser condition in the end? Okay, so we have to write the Haber's process first of all. So, what is Haber's process? It is N2 plus 3H2 giving 2NH3 reaction. Okay. And here, 1 mole, that is 1 liter of nitrogen, reacts with 3 liter of hydrogen to give 2 liter of NH3. In terms of liter, so these are the values. And from here, if I am having, uh, or we can say 10 liter of nitrogen is reacting with 30 liter of hydrogen. 30 liter of hydrogen to give 20 liter of the product. Okay. 30 liter of dihydrogen. So you can see 30 liter of dihydrogen and uh, 30 liter of dinitrogen are given, but here the ratios are 1 is to 3 is to 2. Okay. And from this, we are getting only 50 percentage of the product. So, this is the 100 percentage of the product that we are supposed to get, and the 50 percentage of it would be 50 percentage of it would be how much? It is 10 liter, right? So, for making 10 liter, so what is the composition of the gaseous? So let me take the 50 percentage of each species. Okay. So what is the 50 percentage of this 30 liter? It is 15 liter. And the 50 percentage of this would be 5 liter. So 5 liter of nitrogen reacts with the 15 liter of hydrogen to give 10 liter of NH. So this is the reaction. But in the question you see, we have 30 liter of dihydrogen. We have 30 liter of dihydrogen, but from 30 only 15 is getting reacted, right? Only 15 is getting reacted. So what is the remaining uh, thing? It is 15. And 30 liter of dinitrogen. And from 30 liter of dinitrogen, we are having only 5 liter is reacting. So what is the remaining value? We have 25 liter of nitrogen. Got it? We have 25 liter of nitrogen. And 10 liter is being formed from this. Got it? At the end of the reaction, the composition of the gaseous mixture will be we get 10 liter of ammonia and 25 liter of nitrogen and 15 liter of hydrogen. 25 liter of nitrogen. 15 liter of hydrogen and 10 liter of ammonia is being noted. So first we are taking the initial composition from the given balanced reaction and then we are taking the 50 percentage of the reacting species and uh, 
from the given value we are subtracting the part which is getting reacted and we are taking the remaining composition so which will be the answer for this question you can see 10 liter of ammonia is formed only in option b so that is the correct answer okay yes so coming to question number 71 so assuming fully decomposed the volume of carbon dioxide released at scp on heating 9.85 g of barium carbonate will be and the atomic mass of barium is given as 137 so the volume of carbon dioxide released we have to find out so let me write the reaction first of all so barium carbonate is uh, decomposed to give barium oxide and carbon dioxide okay so here how many grams of barium carbonate is getting decomposed let me calculate the molecular mass of barium carbonate it is for barium it is 137 and for carbon it is 12 and since we are having three oxygen it is 3 into 16 right this 3 into 16 so what is 3 into 16 it is 48 right it is 40 so finally you will get 197 so 197 gram of barium carbonate okay uh, decomposed to give barium oxide and carbon dioxide under standard temperature and con pressure condition since carbon dioxide is a gas 22.4 liter of gas at scp will be produced okay that is for 197 gram this much of carbon dioxide is produced and uh, since they are asking for 9.85 gram of barium carbonate what we have to do it is 22.4 into 9.85 divided by 197 okay for 197 22.4 for 9.85 Just multiply, cross multiply, and get that. So on uh, solving this, you will get one point one two liter as the answer. One point one two liter will be your answer. Which option A is the correct? Okay. Yes. Now coming to question number seventy two. A 20 liter container at 400 kelvin contains carbon dioxide at pressure 0.4 atm and an excess of strontium oxide is also formed. Neglecting the volume of solid uh, strontium oxide, okay? And the volume of the container is now decreased by moving the movable piston fitted in the container. Now the maximum volume of the container when the pressure of carbon dioxide attains its maximum value will be. So we have to find out the maximum volume of the container when the pressure of uh, carbon dioxide attains its maximum value. So let me go with this. We know that P V is equal to N R T, right? So what is the pressure given? What is the initial pressure? It is zero point four. And the volume of the container is twenty liter. Okay, let me take this as P one. Okay, it will be equal to N into R, and the temperature is four hundred K. It is four hundred K, and from this you will get N value as zero point two divided by R. So what is this? This is your. This is your initial initial moles of carbon dioxide this is the initial moles of carbon dioxide now after reaching equilibrium after reaching the equilibrium after reaching the equilibrium so what is the reaction given here this uh, strontium carbonate in solid form is in equilibrium with strontium oxide and carbon dioxide right so since carbon dioxide is the only gaseous component here all pressure is because 
of this only since it is the only gaseous substance all pressure all pressure is because of because of this one okay so what we can write kp equilibrium constant that will be equal to the partial pressure of carbon dioxide which is equal to 1.6 atmosphere given okay now let me take we have to find out the maximum volume of the container right that is the final volume we have to find out let me take this as p2 v2 into n rt so the final pressure is 1.6 and we are asked to find out the volume and the n value is 0.2 by r into r and the temperature is same it is 400 so rr gets cancelled and on solving this you will get the v2 as 5 liter you will get v2 as 5 liter got it the volume of the container is decreased now the volume of the container is decreased and the decrease is from 20 liter to 5 liter got it yes now moving on to the next question this question number 78 so the temperature of a gas is raised from 27 degree celsius to 927 degree celsius the root mean square velocity so how to find out the root mean square velocity that is rms speed the root mean square velocity or root mean square speed is equal to square root of p r t divided by m right so two different temperatures are given to us so let me take the first rms rms uh, one it will be equal to root of 3 r and the temperature is 27 degree celsius so you have to convert this to kelvin 27 27 plus 273 it will be 300 kelvin right so let me substitute 300 in place of temperature and divide it by molar mass and coming to rms2 it is square root of the r what is the next temperature it is 927 degree celsius so 927 plus 23 is 273 is 1200 kelvin so it is equal to 1200 divided by molar mass now what i have to do i have to take the ratio so rms1 divided by rms2 and here taking the ratio of these two so all your 3r 3r and m will get cancelled and uh, here you will get 4 so we are having root of 1 by 4 which is equal to 1 by 2 so rms1 rms1 divided by rms2 is equal to 1 by 2 so uh, uh, or what we can say we can say that rms2 is equal to 2 into rms what happened the temperature of the gas is raised from 27 to 927 and in that case the root mean square is double root mean square is double okay the final root temperature root mean square is the double of the initial root uh, temperature root got it so the answer is option c okay. now coming to question number 80 The standard enthalpy of vaporization for water at uh, 100 degree Celsius is 40.66 kJ per mole. The internal energy of vaporization of water at 100 degree Celsius in kJ per mole is. Assume water vapor to behave like an ideal gas. So now, water is getting evaporated. Means we are boiling the water. So the liquid water. on boiling at uh, 100 degree celsius is it is it is getting converted to h2o as in the gaseous and we have to find out the energy of vaporization that is we have to find out the enthalpy of vaporization so what is the formula to find out the enthalpy it is equal to delta the standard enthalpy right so delta u plus delta 
N G R T. This delta N G R T. So delta U will have to find out, and delta H is given to you. Delta H value is forty point six six, which is equal to delta U is the energy, internal energy. We are asked to find out plus delta H. How to find out delta H? It is equal to the number of moles of the gaseous product minus number of moles of the gaseous reactant. Right? So the product number of moles, like it is a gas, and the number of moles is one. And you can see the reactant is not a gas, so you should not consider it. So it is uh, zero. So the delta N G value is one. So substitute one in place of delta N G, and the R value will be eight. Eight point eight point three one four, and the temperature eight point three one four in kilojoule per mole. No, so it is eight point four into ten to the power minus three, and the temperature is hundred degrees Celsius, and a hundred plus two seventy three gives you three seventy. So into three seventy three. So if they are given in terms of joule, you can substitute since they are given in. Terms of kilojoule just multiply by the number ten power minus three, and on solving, and on solving this, you will get one into the whole number. It will give you three point one zero. Okay, so what is delta U from this? It is forty point six six minus three point one zero, in which it is equal to thirty seven point five six. Kilojoule per mole. Okay, thirty-seven point five six kilojoule per mole is the answer for this question. Okay, so this is the formula we are using here in this problem. Okay, fine. Now coming to question number eighty-two. From the following bond energies, enthalpy for the reaction will be. Enthalpy for the reaction will be. So uh, different bond energies are given, and uh, how to find out the enthalpy? The enthalpy of reaction, that is delta H R uh, of the reaction. From the bond energy can be calculated using the bond energy of the reactant minus the bond energy of the product. So who is the reactant? So CH2 double bond CH2 is the reactant, and we have a uh, one CC double bond here. So to calculate the bond energy of the reactant, so we have one carbon carbon double bond. The bond energy of The carbon-carbon double bond is six point six point one one zero, and we have a four CH bond, right? We have four CH bond, so four CH bonds energy will be four one zero point five zero into four, and uh, what else we have? And also we have H two as the reactant, so one H H bond we are having. The value is four thirty one point three seven. Got it? When we multiply and add everything, we get twenty six two six seven nine point four nine kilojoule per mole as the answer for the bond energy of reactant. So the same way, if we are uh, calculating the bond energy for product, we have one carbon carbon bond here. The bond energy will be three thirty six point four nine, and we have one two three four five. Oh, sorry, one two three four. This is not the thing. A uh, five six. So six C H bond we have. So six C H will give you what is the value of C H bond energy? It is four one zero point five right into six. So this will give you two seven nine nine point four nine as the answer. Now what we have to do? So to find out the delta H, this is the enthalpy of the reaction. The bond energy of the reactant is two six seven nine point two nine minus the bond energy of product is two seven nine nine point four. So the value will be minus one twenty point zero kilojoule per. Okay. 
So option C is the correct answer for this question. So you have to concentrate on this. Find out the delta HR of the reaction. Delta HR of the reaction. You have to use reactant minus product from the given body. Okay. Yes. So coming to question number 86. The work done during the expansion of a gas from a volume of 4 decimeter cube to 6 decimeter cube against a constant external pressure of 3 atm is. So we have to find out the work done. So the formula to find out the work done against a constant external pressure is minus P delta V. So minus P delta final, final volume minus initial volume. And what is the external pressure given to, to us? It is 3. So minus 3. So final volume is 6 decimeter and initial volume is 4 decimeter cube. So it is minus 3. 6 minus uh, 4 is 2. So the final answer will be minus 6 in terms of decimeter. But we have to find out in terms of joules, right? Because in all four options, the answer is given in terms of joules. So to convert this to a joule, you have to... It is in liter atmosphere. It is in liter atmosphere. How it is present in liter atmosphere? One decimeter cube is equal to one liter, right? So since we have substituted everything here in terms of decimeter, we can write this as one liter atmosphere. So now to convert one liter atmosphere to joule, one liter atmosphere can be converted to joule by Multiplying 101.32. Okay. So what will be the answer? Work done will be approximately equal to minus uh, 6 into 101.32, which will be which will be equal to minus 6.82. We'll get minus 6.82. So option B will be the correct. Now coming to question number 96, the oxidation state of chromium and CrO5 is. So this is a special case. You cannot find the chromium oxidation number by taking chromium as X. If you take it as X, you will end up with the plus 10 as the answer for this. But plus 10 is cannot be possible. So since plus 10 is not possible, we have to find this oxidation number from its structure. So let me draw the structure of CrO5. CrO5 has butterfly kind of structure. So CrO5 is having butterfly kind of structure. You can see the structure here. And uh, let me uh, go with this one. Okay. So since oxygen is more electronegative than chromium, since we are having one, one bond between these two, oxygen will gain that electron and chromium will lose one electron. With respect to this bond, there is no electron shifting since both the atoms are same. And for this, again, the chromium loses one of its electron. Oxygen will gain the same way with this also and here also. For here, we are having two bonds, right? So oxygen will gain two electrons and chromium will lose two electrons. So what is the total number of electrons lost by chromium? You can see that it is plus six. So, plus 6 is the oxidation state of chromium in CrO5. Okay. Yes. Now, coming to the last question for this session. It is uh, in the following redox reaction, you have to find out the value of X, Y and Z. So, balancing the redox reaction concept has to be used. So, to balance the redox reaction, Two different methods are there. One is oxidation method, number method, and the other one is half reaction method. You can use any of those methods. And here I am going to use the half reaction method. Okay. So for the half reaction method, what is step number one? So the step number one is you have to divide the two equations. You have to divide the two equations into oxidation half reaction, reduction half reaction. You can see that iron is getting oxidized. So what is the oxidation half reaction? It is 
Fp two plus getting converted to Fp three plus by the by releasing one element. And what is the reduction half reaction? So who is getting reduced here? So Cr two O seven two minus. Here the oxidation state of chromium is plus six. Okay, so it is uh, moving from plus six to plus three in the product state. So it is the reduction half reaction. So now step number two. So after dividing this equation into two, next you have to balance. You have to balance all the atoms except oxygen and hydrogen. So you just see here. So in the first reaction, we have only oxidation half reaction. We have only one Fe that is balanced. And in case of reduction half reaction, the reactant part we are having two chromium. But in the product side we are having only one chromium. So what we can do? We can multiply the product by two. So we get two three plus. Two Cr three plus. Two Cr three plus. Now to balance the oxygen and hydrogen, you have to add H plus and H two. That's already given to you in the question. It's already given to us in the question. Uh, let me add here Cr two O seven. This is step number three. To balance the oxygen and hydrogen, we have to add H plus and H two O in the products. Okay. Now you calculate the number of hydrogens present in left side. It is seven, right? So in the product side also we should have seven oxygen. So I am multiplying here by the number seven. Now we have seven into two fourteen hydrogen. So I am multiplying this H plus by fourteen. Got it? So what I have done? I have balanced all the atoms, including oxygen and hydrogen. Now next step is since the redox balancing involves the balancing of atoms, charges, etc. We have to balance the charges also. We have already balanced the atoms. Now we have to uh, look for the charges. Let me take this reduction half reaction and uh, look for the charge. So here it is one into two minus. So it is minus two, and it is fourteen into plus one, which is plus fourteen. Here two into plus three plus six, and seven into zero zero. So in reduction half reaction, what is the charge in the left hand side? It is fourteen minus two, which is plus twelve. In case of product side, what we are having, we are having plus six. So what to do now? Charge is not balanced. So to balance the charges, I am adding electron. I am adding electrons in the left side, left hand side. So step number four is you have to balance the charges. To balance the charges, I am adding six electrons. Six electrons in the left hand side. Okay, so two Cr three plus and seven H two O seven. So now you see it is one into minus two minus two. It is plus fourteen. Now it is six into minus one minus six. So what is the total answer now? Twelve minus six is six, right? And in the product side, as usual, we are having six. The charge is also balanced. So reduction half reaction is totally balanced. Now we have to check for the oxidation half reaction. Since we have added six electrons here, there must be a loss of six electrons in the oxidation half reaction, right? So what I am going to do? I am going to multiply this oxidation half reaction by six. So I get six Fp two plus, giving six Fp three plus, and six electrons is lost. Now these two are the reactions which we have to consider. These two are the reactions which we have to consider. So just cancel the common terms. So six electron, six electron is common. So I'm cancelling and write the remaining. So the remaining will be six uh, Fe two plus plus uh, Cr two O seven two minus plus fourteen H plus gives six Fe three plus. Plus two Cr three plus plus seven H two O. So this is your final uh, net reaction. This is the net reaction. So in this net reaction or in this balanced reaction, we have to check for the coefficient. So what is the value of x? 
for FE2 plus it is 6 and the value coefficient of Cr2 O7 2 minus is 1 the value of Z is 14. So 6, 1, 14 is the answer for this question. They are the values of X, Y and Z. So option C is the correct answer for this question. Got it? So first divide the equation into two. Then balance all the atoms except oxygen and hydrogen. Then you try to balance the oxygen and hydrogen by adding H plus and H2O. Since it is already given in the reaction, we are just taking that and adding and uh, multiplying by the corresponding numbers. Till step 3, all the atoms are balanced. Now next we have to balance the charges. So accordingly, number of electrons required is added in the reduction half reaction and the same way in case of oxidation half reaction also. So the number of electrons gained and lost should be same, right? So that's why we are doing this and the cancelling the common terms in both oxidation and reduction half reaction leads to the balanced redox reaction. And from that we are finding out the coefficients that is x, y and e. Got it? Okay. So hope uh, the session is very useful to all of you. So thank you so much. Thank you so much.